Good morning, BME. Welcome to a life in the day. No, that's not all right. Welcome to a day in the life of Ed. First order of business, some breakfast. Favorite. So today is a pretty normal. Sunday, uh, I'm going to go over to NIMBY. We are working on rebuilding one of our uh, fire art pieces, uh, 2 pi R. And so today we're going to be finishing up the prototype of, of one of them and hopefully we'll actually be firing it off. So before we head out, I need to just sit down and do a few quick emails, check on websites, you know, the normal morning routine stuff. So we're headed across the Bay Bridge. Uh, we're headed to the other side of the Bay to Oakland to go to NIMBY, which is our warehouse where we do a lot of our work. Uh, today we're going to be testing one of the prototypes for the new 2 pi r rebuild. Uh, basically we're rebuilding 2 pi r to make it better and so that it actually would pass inspection and, and all the legal requirements for uh, running in Denmark later this year. So uh, we're going through the uh, Yerbabuena Island Tunnel here and coming up on the S-curve of Doom where everybody's supposed to slow way down. So we're going to do that and make it through here without dying. Yesterday, uh, we spent quite a few hours at NIMBY uh, building the prototype. Uh, we had to design it and, and then broke apart some old pieces and re-welded them and tried to repurpose as much as we could. I don't think we actually bought any new parts yesterday, so that was good. And came up with this prototype and we're going to see how it actually fires today. And with luck, uh, we'll have a lot of fire, and a lot of fire that's reliable, we will see. We are here at NIMBY, uh, where we'll be working on 2 pi R. I'll give you guys a very quick tour of our shop space. First up, the Falcor Lounge. It's long and white. This is our 40 foot container. It's kind of the hangout, drop bags, design meetings, whatnot. In the back of it is our electronics bench and some mold making stuff. Uh, one of our members is doing some jellyfish molds. Next up is our original container, the beaver. This is basically our tool container. So all of our tools all over the walls and all of our adhesives and manuals and papers and whatnot. And in the back we have hose, lots and lots of hose. Next up is the unicorn, named because the walls are sprinkled with glitter. This is our heavier machinery, the, our drill press, lathe, all the nuts and bolts, and it's also temporary project storage. So any projects that are currently being worked on get stored in these little bins so that we can grab them and they're not taking up space. And yeah, they're easy to get to. Next up is my favorite container, my pants. This is my pants. It is our storage container. Uh, you can see our dance dance simulation suits there. Um, actually in pretty good shape, not too charred because they haven't been used a whole lot other than Denmark. Also in here, the remains of uh, 2 pi R there. We've actually disassembled it because we are rebuilding it. And back in the back here, which is a little bit harder to get to, you can see this is Camp DDI. Uh, it is the Burning Man camp that basically supports uh, interpretive arts and projects when we go out to the playa for Burning Man. And also my favorite bit in here is Flamey Guy. This is my own flamethrower that I built that I like to shoot people with. I'm Captain Mike Burstein, and I'll be explaining the flame effect for 2 pi r. The flame effect begins with 
the source of the, the fuel source, which is right here. This is a tank of propane. Then it goes from this line and it could go in this direction to nowhere. Again, we have a ball valve and here we have, I don't even know what that. Then it goes from here to what we call the fuel manifold. By dialing it left or right, we can control how much pressure comes out. Moving on, we have the flame effect. Here is a solenoid. This solenoid works on a very simple process of when you put juice through it, it opens up, or electricity as some people like to call it. Once this is open, now there's no more blockages for the propane. The propane will go and up through what we call a chimney. It has yet to become fire. What we actually need to make it turn on fire is this thing right here. Tin foil plus propane has a chemical reaction which causes spontaneous combustion. This is why you never see any propane tanks made out of tin foil. Also, in case of spontaneous reaction of propane, uh, propane and tin foil does not work, we also have included inside here an igniter. This specific igniter is more or less a safety valve in case the tin foil does not work. It will ignite here, causing the ignition, the initial combustion to occur at the top. Notice that the top is, uh, of course, a compressed space to a certain extent, only allowing one exit. Therefore, the combustion is driven to go up. If we didn't have it here and we had the igniter up at the very top, we would have a wider flame. However, we have it right here in order to induce a tall, linear flame of beauty and glory. And that's our flame effect. We're now pulling into Home Depot. We can get stuff here that we need. On a Sunday. On a Sunday to stuff make more stuff. Bumps. And those are speed bumps. Yeah. But All right. What are we doing, Iris? Um, we are trying to find um, high heat matte black spray paint to paint all the flame effects so they don't rust. All right, so we've got most of the stuff that we need from Home Depot. Now it is time to go get something to eat. Because uh, I don't think any of us have had lunch yet. And we're all getting a little punchy. Delicious, delicious food. Giant burritos. Hell yeah. How are they? So our testing was successful, and so now we're breaking things down, putting away the flame effect, and then getting to work on some grinding. Alright, well it's reached that point in the night where we're tired, and so that means it's time to go home. And uh, so we're going to head home. It's been a long, full day at NIMBY. Uh, hopefully you guys got a chance to see some of it. Hopefully I didn't slack too much on the video. It was a, a tough balance, both working and trying to do video and photos at the same time. All right, so we made it home safe and sound after a long day of work at NIMBY. And we're basically gonna call it quits for the day. I think I'm pretty much done. Jump in the shower, hop into bed, grab the laptop, maybe watch a movie or something and fall asleep. And do all of this video editing tomorrow. I have one of the cats, one of the cats passed out on my lap. She's just sleeping and purring. And a fiance who is working on her photos from her own hike today. <laughs> All right, BME, good night.